the world of film photography was starting to die out. But then, Film for Anya stepped in to save it. Film manufacturing is ridiculously expensive and it is really difficult, especially since chemicals for producing film products are also starting to become hard to get a hold of. So it's really not clear how long companies like Kodak and Fujifilm, which were set up for a very different film photography market, are going to be able to hold on. This makes a company like Film Ferrania, who in the last five years brought a truly brand new product onto the market, a really interesting thing to look at and a sure sign of hope for the future of film photography. In 2017, Film Ferrania delivered the P30 film stock to the market and showed it to the world as a viable product for the very first time. P30 is a black and white film stock with an ISO rating of 80. The film is made in Italy and it is actually a brand new product, not a repackaged version of an existing film stock being sold under a new name. You see, most facilities that were designed to manufacture film photography products like film stocks and other chemicals were designed for a very different era. And thus they are very old and very inefficient by today's market standards. So running them is an incredible incredibly costly and complicated process for companies like Fujifilm and Kodak, which in turn makes the production not only difficult, but the actual cost for the film photographer to purchase the products very, very high. Film Ferrania is creating the world's smallest full-service film factory with the in-house capability to research, design, manufacture, color, and black and white film for stills and cinema. The Italian company Ferrania started producing photography supplies way back in 1923. And for the most part of the 20th century and the earliest parts of the 21st century, it manufactured film stocks which were sold under a variety of different labels for different brands and marketed across the board. Many drugstore films were actually produced by Ferrania. However, digital technology did what it did to the market. We can all cry about it, but the reality is in 2008, Ferrania announced that they were coming to an end and by 2010 they closed down the rest of their production facilities and were basically gone for good. Or, well, so the world thought anyway because in 2013 a company called Film Ferrania SRL bought one of the research laboratories previously owned by the Film Ferrania Manufacturing Company. Now their goal was to build a facility that could actually live up to today's film photography demands, produce for the demand that's on the market right now, and scale with it as is needed, if needed. Unfortunately, the original kick Starter and the original products that Ferrania wanted to bring onto the market, which included a Super 8 Cinefilm stock, faced a lot of different difficulties and delays, including having difficulty sourcing some of the chemicals that they needed from certain manufacturers, as well as certain machines and equipment necessary to actually produce the film once they developed the emulsion that they were going to ship. However, despite delays, in 2017, they finally announced the P30 film stock to the world, and it is still on the market now five years later. This is hands down one of the most beautiful film stocks that I have ever run across. The emulsion is supposedly based on an older film emulsion that was used in cine films and used in many Italian films that were produced, some of them quite famous. I bought myself one a while ago because I had taken an interest in it and I exposed the roll using my Pentax Spotmatic with a 55mm f1.8 Super Tacomar lens. First thing that struck me on these images is that they are very, very sharp. Not only is the grain fine, which allows for a very high amount of detail, but they are actually very sharp images. Really, really impressed me right off the bat. The contrast is very, very rich. It's almost too much for my taste, but it does have a very nice film noir look, which I do enjoy, and it does look very cinematic. The highlights are quite punchy, but it's not like they clip right away. They're just very, very bright, and the shadows are very deep, and they will hit black. Uh, I think that adds in part to the beauty of the film stock. I wouldn't exactly describe this film as one that survives particularly well in low light situations, not only because the ISO is only 80, so you're gonna have to compensate with fast aperture and a slow shutter speed in order to get a good exposure, but if you do end up underexposing the image, which 
did do a few times. It starts to get a bit muddy and the images do lose a little bit of their, their contrasty and rich characteristic and sort of just turns into a bit of a grey soup. I developed everything inside of Ilford ID11 which is my preferred developer. I used a water stop bath and then I used Ilford Isofix or Rapid Fix, I can't exactly remember what it's called, to fix the film before washing it and then cutting and scanning it using my Fujifilm X-T camera. The film base itself, the actual film stock, is supposedly on the more delicate side, so Film Filmfrani actually recommends that you hand develop the film uh, yourself, or if you're gonna send it to a lab, make sure that they know that the actual base of the film is a little bit more brittle than some others, and there's a potential that it could rip in machine development. I didn't have any issues with it, and for me, it actually dried nice and flat as well. I really, really loved the film for nature shots and still lifes. I really found that the contrast and the, the really punchy nature of the image lent itself really, really well to creating some beautiful results, especially if you can lean into that more contrasty nature and play with really bright highlights in your scene that are contrasting against a much darker surrounding. I also found that it worked fairly well for portraits, but it's a very stylized film if you're going to go ahead and do portraits with it. Like I said already, that sort of film noir look really comes through. I think that for more casual portraits or for more formal portraits, I would actually prefer a film with a wider tonality than Film Ferrania. For landscapes, I found it created some really beautiful and dramatic results that I enjoyed quite well. While we don't exactly know what the future of film photography is going to look at, seeing companies like Film Ferrania come onto the market, develop a brand new product, and set themselves up to be a player in this current environment using a production facility that is geared for the modern demand in film photography and not set and in the antiquated setups that Kodak and Fujifilm have to work with, I think is a very, very good sign for the film photography community. The Film Ferrania P30 film stock is a beautiful film stock that I can highly recommend that you try out. It renders some beautiful images. That's all that I have to say for now, so please like this video if you think I deserve it, subscribe if you think I've earned it, and I will see you next time.